Welcome to Mission Minded, the podcast where we explore outside the box thinking in carrying out Christ's Great Commission. On this week's episode, we are joined by Global Missions Pastor Mark Clyburn. Our sponsor for today's podcast is Dignity Roasters Coffee, locally roasted and packaged by the distressed to fuel each day. Dignity Roasters was born through a passion to partner with the distressed and the desire of bringing the universally loved beverage of coffee to your hands. To order your own coffee or to learn more about Dignity Roasters, visit their website at DignityRoasters.com. Now here's our host, Jim Tingler and Mitch Deans. Hi and welcome back to the Mission Minded Podcast. I'm Jim. And I'm Mitch. And we've got Mark in the studio today. Hey guys, how are y'all doing? Doing good. This is a little bit of a different format. Usually we're Zooming in or Skyping in and not having somebody sitting with us. I know. And how great is it to be face to face? It is. So it's really a pleasure good. to be down here with you guys. It yeah. is great. And Mark, why don't you introduce yourself and sure. maybe tell us a little bit about the work that you do? Sure. My name is Mark Clyburn, and I have the honor to serve as the Global Missions Pastor at Warren Baptist Church in Augusta, Georgia which is the land of golf, Who those who love the game of golf. so For those who don't, what, what puts Augusta on the map? Um, there are a couple of different things. Certainly there's a fort there, Fort Gordon, so um, you know a lot of military personnel, okay. uh, but also a lot of diversity with the hospital system. And okay. So just a great town, falling in love with the city uh, well, I mean, over those, the past couple of years. Those who might not know the Masters is... So who would that be? Though? I don't know. That's I mean, it's it's such that's your world. A, yeah, it is. It's it's a it's a special special place and obviously a special event that um, it's really cool to be a part of. It's a pretty big golf tournament every year, and what what impact does that have on Augusta and your community? It's it's really interesting. I'm still new to Augusta, so moved in January of 2019. Okay. So. Uh, that obviously it happened that first year was bonkers traffic. Obviously that was the last full, full on masters tournament. Uh, then it was very unique because they decided this past time in November for the first time where no patrons were allowed. So it was kind of quiet, a little bit different. And now we stepped into, you know, partial size and patrons and it felt a little bit more like normal. So Lord willing, it will be like a uh, normal next year, but it's huge impact on the economy and the community. And it's like, you know, the city of Augusta is built on a week of, of the year. So, and for those who didn't get a chance to watch the masters, how was it this year? It was fantastic. Yeah. You know, had a, um, a Japanese player win Hideki mm-hmm. Atayama. So that was real exciting. And, um, yeah, it's just a beautiful place and a beautiful, um, thing to be a part of. Didn't get there this year myself personally, but was able to watch it on TV. Nice. How often uh, well, you, you just moved there. Mm-hmm. So how often would you be able to get tickets? I mean, in the future, it's the hardest ticket to get. Okay. So I've been twice in my life. So back in 2007, uh, my wife gifted it to me for my birthday, went to a practice round. And then in 2015, had the opportunity to travel over. Originally, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. So it's not too far of a, a drive to get over and experience it. So being on the ground is pretty special. Yeah, and you know, it's great. It's basically, trying to get a golden ticket for the chocolate factory. It really kind of is. Deal. Yeah, it it's, is. it's that because there is a lottery, so yes. anybody can yeah. sure you know, register for the lottery and get a ticket. And well, to put that context in a place, so my mm-hmm. father-in-law is a big golf fan, okay. and every year he makes sure that I'm signed up for the lottery, and this has been since I think 2007. Uh-huh. I've been entering the lottery and have yet to win. I'm sorry. Well, it is what it is. It's, it's the it's year. the golden ticket. Yeah. It is. But, it, but you yeah. keep trying. You keep For trying. Sure, because, I'm there. Yeah. So anyways, you know, Mark, we like to just ask some of the fun mm-hmm. things too. So what, yeah. are the, what are the things that you do for fun on the side? It's something that I consider fun. A lot of people may not, but I love to run. So okay. that's a passion of mine. It's a hobby. So I really have two passions outside of my family and and the mission and that's uh running and golf Mm -hmm. and i love to run so i run pretty much every day the further the better so just a great time for me to escape and what's your like optimal distance that you um the longest i've ever run is a race in south africa and that's 57 miles so 90 kilometers um but my you know i train normally for marathon yeah that's by my basic training so you don't dabble no i try not to this is serious. Yeah. Okay. I've done 
three half marathons mm-hmm. and that almost killed me so it's impressive 50 well i've seven miles yeah, i've learned that you can you know obviously the body will adapt and train and right. can be prepared for for a lot of different grueling stuff but mm-hmm. great opportunity for me just to unplug and i don't listen to anything so it just allows me to spend time with god and um decompress from you know whatever yeah. stressors are in the life to um so and then I feel a whole lot better after. Yeah, I find that when I pray, when I run, I often take my mind off the fact that I'm running. For sure. It helps. That's exactly right. <laughs> Mitch, you're a runner. I try to be. Yeah. Okay. I haven't maybe in about six months. Mm-hmm. But. Okay. Well, yeah, it's it's an interesting sport. Mm-hmm. So for those uh, maybe getting into running, Mark, is obviously you're a little more uh, further down the yeah. road, pun intended. Uh, would you give any advice to somebody? Start slowly. Okay. Uh, don't feel like you have to do too much too fast too soon uh, and just enjoy it. Yeah, you don't have to feel like you're going to kill yourself. Mm-hmm. Then you can learn to endure the longer distances. And I think everybody, you know, if, if, they're, if they're able, train to do a marathon because it, it just gives you a different perspective on a lot of things in regards to your body and life. And mm-hmm. it's really cool. Nice. So, Mark, you've had um, some connection with iTech for, mm-hmm. I think, over a year now, and we've actually uh, met right. before. We came up to, Jamie and I came yeah. up to see you guys last year, um, but I actually did a bit of research on the Warren Missions page to find mm-hmm. out a bit more about you, mm-hmm. and I came across a quote that I, I think is appropriate for this podcast. That It says, it, you said, it is so encouraging to see how the Lord has been working upstream to equip and confirm this calling for the both of us. And you were talking about your, your, you and your wife. Yes. Um, so maybe for a bit of background for people, how did how has God been working upstream and how has he led you to the position you're in now at Warren yeah, Baptist? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a great story that only the Lord could write. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm married. Uh, my beautiful wife, wife, Allison, we've been married 26 years this December. And... Um, just going back a little bit in our testimony and our story is we were married, living the American dream. We have two daughters. Um, at the time, they would have been 10 and 6. And we were plugged into a church in Birmingham, Alabama. And this, to me, was a normal church Sunday. And we go, and um, Allison said something really profound to me. At the time, I didn't realize it. She said, hey, there's something that I really need to talk to you about. I just feel compelled that we need to talk about it. So we go to church. Um you know, just think it's going to be a normal day, and there's a guest speaker there. And the guest speaker there is, is, is introducing the church to a ministry that the church is going to partner with. Mm-hmm. And they, this gentleman on the stage was talking about Swaziland. And, she, and literally when he was saying it, she says, that's what I need to talk to you about. She said, because the Lord impressed upon me last night that I need to listen and respond. And basically they were preparing to go on a short-term mission trip. This would have been back in 2007. And I hadn't lost anything in Africa, didn't have really any desire or feel the call, Mm -hmm. but really just how the Lord used that. And then over the period of the next probably five to six months, called us to journey to Swaziland, Africa on a short-term trip in 2008, fell in love with the country, went back in 2009, and that's when he confirmed, hey, this is, you know, where I want you to serve. So we didn't know what that looked like, obviously went through all the appropriate steps and process and the Lord moved us in 2010 to Swaziland, Africa. Burnt our ships back stateside. So me and my wife, Allison, my daughter, Madeline, and Emma loaded up and went. We really thought we would be there um, forever. You know, we just had planned that. And about four years in, the Lord started whispering, uh, it's time to return. Hmm. And we really fought him on it. We just didn't want to. Our desire was to stay there. Just to give you a little bit of overview of the ministry, it's an orphan and vulnerable children ministry through Adventures and Missions and having a huge impact. But it was relatively new in the early days. And we get there and start plugging in and just, you know, um, you know, I think the ministry is highly effective. And when he started to whisper that to us and really put upon our heart that it's time to return, and really what he kept whispering is, you said you would follow me anywhere. Hmm. So obviously, you know, just out of conviction and obedience, we returned, um, didn't really know what that looked like, uh, but then found out that, you know, the Lord had provided an opportunity to stay with the organization, work stateside and help manage the ministry. 
in Swaziland. And then that really taught us a lot about development because we were trying to raise up the local indigenous um, leaders to lead their own people. Mm. And literally when we moved there, there was about eight to 10 indigenous staff members. And today there's over a hundred and it's actually indigenous led. Wow. So, you know, obviously we look back and see the Lord's fingerprints. Uh, and then I, working with the organization, you know, loved being stateside and being able to still be heavily involved in the ministry. But I did feel, you know, kind of a sense of, you know, a, a church pastoral role. Didn't know what that would look like. And literally in time, a pastor, Dr. McKinley, called me and had a relationship with him because they were partnered with the ministry in Swaziland. Mm. So developed a lot of relationships. Now, Warren used to send a couple of teams a year. So literally over the years, you know, 50, 60, 70 people uh, we became friends with. And when he called and we just had a discussion, he asked me to pray about joining his staff there and just the Lord made it abundantly clear that that's where we were supposed to be. And obviously using all of the experiences, you know, to equip us to be prepared. And cool thing is we came over in January 2019, didn't know it at the time. My wife's a, a, a trained teacher and um, there was an opening in the children's ministry. And so she came on staff shortly thereafter. And I told Pastor McKinley all the time, I was like, you got the better end of the deal with her than me. But just seeing how he's using both of us, you know, for the, furtherance of his kingdom there in Augusta. It's, it's real exciting and just a pleasure to be a part of. Hmm. That's great. You know, I, I just wonder, what does a, a week in, week out look like for you at the church? What is a normal day for Mark? That's a great question. It's obviously, it's a lot different today than it was in, you know, in 2019, because in 2019, I, you know, when I came Warren is, is a, a invested heavily into global missions mm -hmm. and have, you know, they've had impacts in many different areas. And obviously, you know, I kind of came into after a, a, a pastor that is a dear friend of mine and retired, he's retired and, you know, they have, they had a lot of activity going on. So a lot of trips. So we were very busy in 2019, you know, a lot of travel, a lot of travel planning, you know, equipping of teams. And then of course, COVID, COVID hit, um, so, but I would say my general day is obviously staying closely connected to our missionaries. You know, that mm -hmm. is my heart. You know, I, I have a, a, a high value on member care and making sure that they are um, well cared for, encouraged, and strengthened by anything that we can do stateside to support the work there. Uh, so a lot of phone calls, uh, Lord willing, will continue to, to kind of ramp back up to trip planning. Um, and obviously, you know, in our local community, things that we can do outreach there. Obviously, my involvement with iTech uh, had the opportunity to um, come over in 2019. And then Jamie came and spoke at, at Warren. And we were really ramping up to, you know, have an equipping focus uh, to really just kind of shift, you know, our, our perspective. And, you know, when we do go out, you know, our focus and, you know, intention with our local partners. And then, of course, COVID, but still has allowed us to continue to prepare and be ready for when we are able to, to engage and go on yeah. a consistent basis. Absolutely. So there's been a, I guess you're saying there's a preparation phase that you've mm -hmm. seen in COVID. I guess to back up a little bit, the time that you have in, had in Swaziland and with Adventures for Missions, that was a preparation f phase, mm -hmm. I guess, sure. for the time that the Lord's put you in now in this position with Warren Baptist. Can you um, maybe expound on some of those learning experiences and maybe even some testimony of that time? Yeah, I think back on the mission field, you know, seeing overall a very healthy model of ministry, mm -hmm. certainly unhealthy elements uh, that we were continually trying to improve and better. You know, I think working with church partnerships, that certainly has equipped me for, uh, you know, being uh, on the, the church staff pastoral side uh, and on the other side, working with partners and, and really just uh, re respecting the field driven perspective instead of, you know, a, a, a church trying to dictate what's happening on the field because that should never be our role. Mm -hmm. Should yeah. always be able to come up underneath. Explain what you mean by that. The field driven side. Right. Yep. That obviously, and we're working with a partnership that 
obviously they're they are driving the ministry forward and you know our role is to come up underneath them undergird them strengthen them and help advance their ministry the the local church in that context of course yeah yeah Yeah. so not for us to go in there and say hey why don't you do this okay because that i don't think provides any benefit when we may not have the deep cultural context that obviously they did which is a different approach to traditional mission that's exactly right right. Yeah. yeah Yeah. So what would be some of the, the shift in perspective that, that you've had, you know, going to Swaziland, I mean, I'm sure you're a different person today and God, sure. God has shaped and, and as Mitch was saying, prepared you, uh, but maybe going back to that 2007 mark, mm-hmm. what might you tell 2007 mark today? Yeah, it's without a doubt, it's that, you know, I had the, well, what am I going to go and do? you know, mentality. I mean, it's like, okay, I, I am going to go and do and accomplish this. So, you know, any time we're mobilizing and, and trying to raise up a team, you know, I always tell them, no, take a step back, have that learner's mentality. You know, take a step back, just soak it in, learn, love, encourage, and support, but don't have the mentality that you've got to go and do something for it to be a success. So it's a the measurement of success is a big part of it. I think culturally, that that's a part of the American way. Is, sure, is we want to do, we want to solve a problem, and so it is. It is hard to get over that. And, yeah, and, and I think that's just a challenge that we face. Um, and you know, obviously, in our role, it's just to help communicate and you know educate and um, motivate people to understand. And you know, and that's team leadership is so important. So you know, raising up that team leader, whoever's leading that team, that. You know that the philosophy is is solid, and you know there's a good understanding. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask, um, just with what you've learned, um, particularly about um, not just going and doing, but going and empowering, mm-hmm. strengthening the the workers on the field in their own context. How has that impacted your work with Warren? I know COVID's been a factor. You haven't been able to to go and travel, but in the mission efforts that you have been involved in. I think How I think it, impacted it, you? it it it's really been important, you know, because obviously I had you know this philosophy coming in because I've seen this success in Swaziland of of empowering and raising up the locals. Right. Uh, so, and I knew they were receptive to it, you know. But what I wasn't sure was, well, what are all what does it look like the rest around the rest of the world where Warren is working? Mm-hmm. So that's you know, a big part of my time was just evaluating and learning that in the early stages. And, you know, when we had the opportunity to have Jamie come and speak, you know, I think that obviously encapsulated, you know, my heart for missions and a lot of alignment and how we were moving forward and, you know, tremendous success and people responding and understanding. Shortly thereafter, we were able to take a group through the missions dilemma um, and then just continually to equip and empower even through um, COVID because obviously we've ha- been able to bring groups down here. I got a group with me right now mm-hmm. just learning and and seeing how we can take the different tools that you guys have and, you know, apply them to, to where uh, our family's working. Yeah. That's good. There was a, a Barna study that was released that showed, I don't remember the exact numbers, but a very small per- percentage of the churches across the U S would understand what the great commission actually is, you know, what scriptures it would pertain to? Only seventeen percent mm-hmm. was, was it? Okay, yeah. I knew it was low. It's low, yeah. and I would assume one of your goals is that that is in the foreground of you know the church body. Mm-hmm. And so, what are some of the things maybe you do to encourage that Great Commission participation in the congregation? Well, the one thing is, Doctor David McKinley is absolutely clear and concise. Uh, in his teaching of the role of the church in the Great Commission. Mm-hmm. And I love this. Uh, he has said recently, it's, it's to make, it's to mark, and it's to mature disciples. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously the role that every one of us have in that, ha- has with that. So certainly we, we are fed that, um, but it's still a challenge, right, because we all have to participate and we have to do our part. Uh, so, yeah, even as we kind of, move it down towards, you know, the mission minded people is that that is always the emphasis that as we go and as we equip, if it's a discipleship class that we're doing, if it's training on solar, you know, motor, you know, equipment, small motor, 
equipment, whatever we're doing, that the focus is that we're going to equip and empower them to make disciples right. and then multiply disciple makers. And as an example, somebody in the church says, hey, that's great, but I don't really feel like God's called me in that way. Um, I certainly struggle with that. Right. And, you know, I, I, you know, I just want to want to encourage and explain that that's I mean, you have a role in that, whether it's here or there. Right. You know, it, you, not everybody has to get on an airplane. I mean, it should always start with our neighbor. Right. Yeah, that's that's the idea of that. Everyone has a role to play mm-hmm. and whether that is going uh, supporting, praying. Pray, yep. uh, this is this is a team effort. This isn't just for the people in Swaziland. They, they come and give reports. You know, it's it's the whole church. Absolutely, and I, you see it on the other side is because obviously it's not just the role of the Western Church to fulfill the Great Commission, right? The local indigenous church has to pay a role, and you know you love that throughout the missions dilemma that there's a math problem if not because there's just not enough missionaries and. You right. know, people to to accept the call to be able to to fulfill the Great Commission. Especially we're now the minority church. That's right. The majority world church is in the Southern Hemisphere. Mm-hmm. And so what role do we now play in this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say a cool strategy that I heard of the other day is when you're putting your shirt on in the morning, look at the tag, um, see what country it is. And usually if it's not in the made in the U.S., it's made in a an area of the world where there are unreached people. Um, So that's one thing that you can do each day. Um, It may be the same country every day, but um, just to broaden your perspective on unreached people in the world and be praying, um, that's, yeah, that's what we can start doing. It's a great place to start, yeah. Yeah. So you're actually visiting iTech, obviously. Mm -hmm. You're here. You're here with a team. Yes. And you guys are here getting some training in our... Solar training. That's correct. So what do you hope to use this in? We we really feel like there's a lot of different applications and certainly in the third world underdeveloped areas where if we, you know, give uh, local church leaders, you know, this equipping to where they can go out and reach their community gives them an opportunity to kind of meet a physical, that physical felt need to open the door to a spiritual conversation. And we just really want to... Um, see how I've obviously I've got some guys here that are a whole lot smarter than me when it comes to the electrical side. So really want to build up those advocates and, and leaders within our body mm-hmm. in all the different areas uh, that you guys um, train on. So then we can disperse them to the, to the mission field to, to really, you know, we don't want to put a, a round peg in a square hole. We want to make sure that it, it fits and there again, it's field driven. It's great. Yeah. So, yeah, we appreciate just the time that you guys would take um, to come down. It, we've had a lot of teams come through, but you've been here before for yeah. other trainings as well. Yeah. Yeah, we did the small engine training. It was actually last year. So that was really um, informative to me. There again, somebody who has no tangible skills with his hands. Uh, but, yeah, I could see where you it is a transferable skill uh, cross-culturally. So... Um, that's very encouraging and they're going we're just excited to uh, see it implemented um, where we can get out and go good stuff what do you think Mitch I think it's great I think the partnership that we have with you guys at Warren um, we want to replicate that um, so if there's anyone out there listening who is a part of a church that's potentially during this COVID season mm-hmm. rethinking their mission strategy and yeah. And wanting to incorporate training as a as a model in that strategy, we would love to be in touch. And I know the partnership that we've had with you guys has been fruitful already, uh, yeah. even during this season. So absolutely, I would want to encourage that. If if anybody is hesitant, if they're just not sure, like, well, God, it just doesn't. You know, maybe it doesn't fit, man. Pick up the phone, and call Mitch, and uh, just uh, allow him to evaluate. And uh, one of their great guys, and awesome to to build relationship with and uh, certainly also want to encourage us all and not to grow weary mm-hmm. uh, as we continue to to move forward because um, obviously we know there is a due season for harvest if we don't uh, grow tired so just excited to to look towards the future and and claim ground for the kingdom 
Definitely. That's awesome. And that listener out there that might be wrestling with, all right, God, I feel a call in some capacity. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, what advice would you give that person to just stay the course and maybe discover what that is? Uh, certainly through a lot of prayer, I would seek counsel. Um, I've, I've been, one thing that I've seen the Lord um, do and kind of redeem throughout this season of COVID is I've seen him raise up those that feel the call to go. So I've, I've just, I'm encouraged and overwhelmed when I get those phone calls or those emails. Say, hey, the Lord's just prompting me. I don't know what to do with that, but it's like, yeah, seek counsel from any pastoral staff if you're a part of a church. Um, obviously, if there's a missions pastor and just learn more, if you know a missionary, reach out uh, and just um, listen and learn. And sometimes it does take patience and, uh, you know, just obedience to, um, to that still small whisper. Uh, but then when he makes it clear, you take that step of faith. Yeah. On that, why don't we call it a day? Okay. It's been a pleasure, guys. Thanks, for, thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Mission Minded. For more information on today's topic and show notes, please visit our website, itechusa.org. Mission Minded Podcast is produced by iTech. The goal of this podcast is to inspire conversations about Great Commission participation. The views, organizations, and individuals represented, interviewed, and discussed on the podcast do not necessarily represent an official position or formal partnerships with ITEC.